All right, the second presenter of the day is Pierre. He will talk about his robotic vision system. All right, uh, my term project uh, was to take a uh, robotic arm and make it capable of picking up um, little Fisher Price toys. There's triangles, stars, squares, and circles of different colors. Um, and the idea was that this system should be able to um, locate these objects, uh, recognize them based on user input, um, and then put them in a predefined bin with a robotic arm. Um, these are the processing stages we go through with this. Um, first in MATLAB, uh, the, the MATLAB script takes a frame using the uh, digital image acquisition toolbox, um, and it provides that to the script. Um, then that frame is basically processed to remove noise, um, which on the background it might be a little bit of light reflection, um, or I'm using a cloth that, that absorbs some light. Um, so it might be like a, a little dust or something on there. We remove all that. Um, we identify all the objects. Uh, basically when the image is acquired, we've got like an outline of the image. Uh, so we take that outline um, and we, uh, we fill it so that the object is um, a full shape, which you'll see a screenshot of in a little bit. Um, and then we identify those. So they're all labeled with BW label, a morphological operator. Um, and then we look through as each uh, object is classified. Um, there are two matrices that are populated, one for shape and one for color. And we parse those after we're done to see if uh, we have any matches based on the user's request. <coughs> um, this is a state chart. It's kind of hard to see the text here. Um, basically, the way it works is the GUI's launched. You wait for the input from the user. There's an option to preview the field of vision to make sure that uh, the object has been placed within an area that the camera can see. Um, after that, uh, the process is started. It captures a frame. It removes the noise and labels the objects, determines the colors, then it determines the shapes, um, and then it checks to see if there's any match. And if there's a match, um, it does all the calculations to rotate the base uh, so that the arm is pointing at the object and then it moves the arm so that the gripper is right in front of the object so it can pick it up. Um, and if there's no matches, then it just notifies the user and exits. Uh, it's just a class diagram here. There's basically uh, five parts to this MATLAB script, not including um, two additional scripts that were provided uh, with Gonzales Wood's book to do um, boundary detection and also to do um, the, shape, the shape detection. Uh, so basically, you've got your graphical user input here. Uh, that calls the main script that does the robotic vision. And then you've got two others, one to do color determination, one to do shape determination. And then when everything's done, you go on to the arm movement. This is an example of uh, the frame processing that's done. Um, this is the acquired frame. Um, you can see in the bottom here, there's a little bit of noise from the background. Um, the shapes aren't filled. So first, we remove this noise, and we get this over here. And then we fill the shapes so that we can go through with the morphological operator and identify the objects. This is how the shape detection is done. Uh, this is the script that's provided with the Gonzales Woods book. Um, we get these waveforms here that are generated by the, by the borders of these shapes. Uh, and basically, the way that I calculate what a shape is is I take a horizontal plane and I put it right through the middle and I count the number of times this waveform goes through that plane and I divide that number by two and that tells me the number of peaks. So for example, this one here is five peaks, so that's a star. All the peaks correspond to um, the corners of the objects. So you have a star here with five peaks, a square has four peaks, your triangle has three. Um, you would see that if w when we run the demo, um, a circle will just have uh, a waveform that goes all over the place but that's because it's zoomed in to, to fit that waveform. Um, if you were to zoom out, it would look close to a flat line. And this is how I do the rotation and distance calculations for the arm. Um, once an object has been identified, we get the centroid of that object, and we calculate the distance from the centroid to an x-plane and a y-plane. Um, and we've got an offset here. This is actually a top-down view of how the system is set up. Um, your offset is basically from the center of where the arm rotates to the base 
of the field of vision of the camera. Um, the uh, y-axis uh, splits the, the frame right up the middle. Um, and then you've got your distance calculations here. You're just using um, some simple squares and square roots to figure that out. And then you can figure out the uh, angle that the arm has to rotate also using this. And that's the end of the slideshow, so I'll move on to the demo here. Okay, so this is the GUI. Um, you've got three fields you fill in here. The first is the shape that you want to look for. Uh, second is the logic, and the third is the color. And these colors aren't showing up right. It's red on the top, green in the middle, and blue. Um, so what you can do is you pick a shape, and then you can either say that you want a circle, for example, and it also has to be red, or you can say that I want an object that is circular or red, um, so you can be as specific or as vague as you want with this. Um, and then there's also a preview window to make sure that you're putting the object within the camera's field of view. And then in addition to this, the way the system is calibrated, because this camera rotates a little bit, uh, there's also a problem with the camera. The lens is defective. So you can see here, this is a perfect square that's on this. And you can actually see the left side of this square here is kind of curved in. The same thing on the right. There's some kind of, uh, I don't know, problem with the lens and the camera. So that's a limitation of the system. But that's how the system's calibrated and works. So if we have any misfires, um, just a little bit off in the, in the pixel calculation is enough to throw the base rotation off uh, like a quarter of an inch and instead of picking the object up, it's playing whack-a-mole with the object, so uh, we'll run this here. First thing we'll do is we'll try and pick up a square. So we got this here. Now what this is going to do, um, when I hit go, it's going to move the arm out of the way because we don't want the camera to take a picture of the arm, just the object. Uh, and then it's going to do all the calculations, and if it finds anything, it'll pick it up and put it in the blue bin. So what we're going to be looking, whoops. What we're going to be looking for here is this green square. So we'll select uh, square, and we'll say and green. And we say ready, set, go. <coughs> and then what we have in the results, we have a series of outputs here. Uh, this is the captured frame that we've got. Uh, this is thresholding. Noise removed, there wasn't really any noise to be removed. Um, and then you have the final filled object as it was labeled. Um, next, we have the color channel. The way that the color is calculated basically is I create a mask. And I go through with that mask uh, against the color channel of the original image and see, I calculate the uh, average brightness of that area. And then if it's above or below a certain threshold, it classifies yes or no, we found that color. Um, and then after that, we've got the uh, shape detection here, um, which again I explained, you just put a horizontal line through there and that's the number of uh, peaks you've got. So if we want to try something a little more complicated with more objects here, let's see, I'll try this again, let's see what we got. So first I'll start with the uh, green circle. <laughs> and then uh, pick up the remaining two objects here. We'll go for the uh, blue square next, so we'll go blue. And since the circle's gone, we'll change this. So we'll just say we're either looking for something that's circular or blue so we can see the other functionality. And then we'll pick the last one up here just for we'll go uh, circle or red. That's pretty much it. Any questions?
No? All right. <laughs> Great job. And I can't emphasize enough how much I appreciate the type of work that Pierre has done with her STEM project. This is above and beyond my most optimistic expectations for a term project for this class and I really thank him for putting the time, the effort, the money, the hardware, the dusting off his geometry notebooks to get uh, distance calculations and coordinate corrections and everything. This is absolutely great. I'm very glad to see the final result turning out as nice as it did and I can't uh, commend uh, uh, Pierre enough for his hard work and his excellent results. We have uh, three more presentations to go. I would like to invite Alan Pellin to be our next speaker. I'll just uh, remove the video connector from here, if you don't mind. <laughs>